Now we're looking at the Air Force painting. The Air Force itself is the youngest branch of the military. Its birthday is, is um, September 18th, 1947. And um, it's born out of the United States Army Air Corps, Army Air Force, which probably the more famous of, the, of them was the 8th Air Force, and we see a patch up there. But I'd like to take us back a long, long time ago to Icarus falling from the sky. And the reason I have him up there is actually in the Air Force history book. They do have the first couple of paragraphs talking about Icarus and Dedalius' father and the, the, just the desire and interest that man had in flying. And so we, as we know, he flew too close to the sun and the wax melted on his wings and hence he came dropping out of the sky. Now as we move below that, we will see the uh, blue balloon of the Moncofier brothers and it had its maiden flight in November of 1787, I believe it was, and Benjamin Franklin was actually at that uh, flight. And that was uh, the very beginning of man's actual man, you know, ascending into the sky, so to speak. And during the Civil War, and even before that, balloons were used a lot for like spy missions and things like that. So um, they became a very important component in uh, what the Air Force had done or what man was interested in doing early on. And then behind that is the um, Freedom Flight Balloon uh, honoring the POWs and MIAs. As we move to the center, we see a, um, an old airplane, biplane, and that was the, um, oh gosh, it, it leaves my mind, I'm sorry, the, the, the name of that plane, but it was the last biplane used by the United States Army. And the interesting thing about it was the last time um, that that plane was in service was in the late 30s. So we move down and we do then see a lady walking with a briefcase and that was one of the women army special pilots of World War II where these women actually logged over 60 million hours of flying planes around the country and to military bases because all the men were away at uh, war and so they were very, very involved and I believe at one time there were about maybe 1,100 of these women still in that uh, pilot corps originally and, and there are about three survivors and one recently died. As we move to the lower left-hand corner from there, we then see a pararescue mission. Now, a lot of people are probably not aware of the fact that the Air Force also does have a specially trained group of commandos, much like the Army Rangers, Green Beret, Navy SEALs, and Marine Recon. And these gentlemen go in and they extract uh, people from the field, and so there generally are one or two of these um, Air Recon guys with um, um, air evac guys with the SEALs or the Rangers. And so we have a guy protecting, we have actual General David Hamler as the doctor administering plasma to the wounded soldier on the ground. And um, he was actually in over 30 different evac missions in Iraq, Afghanistan, and actually did one in uh, Pakistan. General David Hamler is the first Native, uh, excuse me, first African American in Minnesota to be promoted to a Brigadier General in either the Air Guard or National Guard. And it was a real honor to have him come to my studio and pose for me. Now as we move to the far right hand corner of the painting, we'll start at the very bottom. We have Brigadier General Sandra Best, who was, at the time was the Chief of the Minnesota Air Guard, and she was the first woman in Minnesota to ever be promoted to a Brigadier General in either the Air Guard or National Guard. And on that ordinance, just to her right, our left, you will see the 109th, the 133rd, and the 149th, uh, 47th out of um, um, uh, Duluth. The, uh, we have the uh, fighter jets, and then we have the 133rd are the big C-130s we see flying around. And that woman is, is with medical evac, and that's what we see her on her red t-shirt is a medical evac uh, patch. Then we are in the cockpit of a C-130, and then from there we move up to the astronauts, and that is Ed White, who was an Air Force astronaut, and that is from the very first U.S. spacewalk, which was July in 1965. And then from there we can see like a tanker filling a F-16, and without that ability to do aerial refueling, the Air Force would not have the reach it does. And way up in the distance we have a satellite, and that just lets us know that the Air Force is involved in a lot of things that are either seen or unseen. And then that little kind of weird vignette is the Air Force Academy, and that pays homage to all of the different academies that we have uh, in the different branches of the military. One other final note, the very bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a five-star. Hap Arnold was a five-star general from World War II, who was, was the only individual to be a five-star general in, in two different branches. So he was a five-star general in both the Army and Air Force. Is that it?
No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of that plane. My mind drawn a blank.